thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Gita, for the very nice and inspiring uh, speech. And uh, uh, if I if I may reinforce what she said is that uh, um, we have to have, uh, yes, uh, well, among very many things, but uh, one is that uh, we, may, we need to have uh, to look to local, to understand the local issue, but at the same time, I really think that uh, we have to be into a so-called transcultural learning process. I mean, uh, I, I love to expose my students to other culture, not to say that they will be able to design concept necessarily for another context, uh, but that in a learning process of being exposed to that, they become enriched by something and uh, they will come back to their own context uh, and then doing something like this. And this is what really the <coughs> uh, Lenses Network want to do, is not to say uh, lo locality, we just have to think about global, of course, sustainability is global and local, but uh, uh, I think we don't have to forget that if we remain just local, this could be a danger as well. It's even a political danger I'm not speaking about the results of the election in the U.S. That <laughs> maybe we can, can cancel this into the no. Uh, we put uh, good marks. I want the Trump. That's terrible. We are very very afraid. Sorry, no, but he is even against uh, the sustainability agenda and uh, and very many other things. So. Uh, <coughs> so the word is difficult, but I think that transcultural education, which is more than uh, intercultural, is is really that you get in touch with another, you get something, and you are enriched, and you come back to your own context, and you. Uh, uh, and you you do you design you uh, depends on your profession and this is something that within the lens we want to we want to do so sorry for taking this uh, little time to but this is a, a platform for discussion so I, I think it's worthwhile to 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 say this and I've been learning so much from you and when I'm going around the world I'm, this is and I'm happy um, I'm I'm lucky to have this opportunity. I've always been learning a lot. And uh, <coughs> so now I'm going to talk to you about system design for sustainability for all, which is the <coughs> uh, research hypothesis, as we academic are saying. You know, there is uh, something that uh, we think need to be developed. There is a new knowledge that need to be developed. We call it research hypothesis because we think that. It could be developed, and of course, in, since we are designers, it's, it's related to design. And this is what we are going to uh, develop within the lenses. But uh, he even here, I want to highlight two things. We can develop a new knowledge, which I think is important, but on the other side, the lens network is not saying, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. The lens network worldwide said, we are a worldwide community that want to share different perspective on design and sustainability. So you disagree totally on this, tell me why, don't do that. that so everyone is, is, is free of doing this. Well, we agree in the Lenses community to work on this issue even for some historical reason because we have been working already on these topics and this is an evolution of that. But I'm going slowly. So. I will say something about sustainable development and design a premises, but it's something quite close to what Gita said before about sustainable productivity system design. And I'm gonna skip this. If you you all know, s you, you, if all of you said, I know what's this, I just uh, skip this part. 
And then uh, maybe this is a bit new for you because it's a new research hypothesis. What does it mean to apply sustainable productivity system business model to distributed economies? That, as Gita said, they are already existing here. This is true, even SPSS, they are already existing. And even here, sorry, if I take a little bit, uh, the p in, in my perception, we have to learn from the past, but, uh, and tradition are very important, but I think and I believe the tradition are human construction. And tradition are, they are not fixed, they change in time, and time is change. So we have to take what is good from the tradition, but we don't have to think that we have to do how it was made at that time. Okay, so this is, I'm sure, I'm not, I'm sure you think as I'm doing, or maybe say no, <coughs> but this is uh, very, very, very important. And then I will say something about system design for sustainability for all, because of course we are speaking about applying a business model to another business model, but no, we are not businessmen, we are designers. So we have to understand what is our role into designing such a new business model or uh, which he, with this different type of artifact, which is not just a product, as we are mainly used. So sustainability and design. When we speak about uh, design for sustainability, it, this is far obvious, okay? You say, Carlo, you are stupid. Why do you write this? But anyhow, it's, you know, understanding what are the various roles that the designer uh, can have you know, to give a contribution to sustainable development. Easy. But then sustainable development is not that easy. And where we are, and here I, 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 I thank Gida helped me to, to say something. Uh, if we look at the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, great, I said it right. In a speech you never had to say intergovernmental because you <laughs> always fail. On climate change, if you see the size, uh, the sea ice extension uh, from 1980 to 2012, you see on uh, how how much it has decreased. It's impressive. It's a lot, and people don't know this that much. It's somewhere there on the news. They forget it. Then they maybe look uh, a movie series, which is very nice, and that maybe I would like as well. But we have to remind this. And what the uh, climate panel said to us, you know, this is the hugest ever uh, uh, build a uh, group of researcher worldwide working on climate change. If they say that in 2100 uh, the sea level will be if we don't do anything, one meter higher, this doesn't mean that we, this could be a swimming pool that we can swim here inside and it's nice and it's funny. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. Every, the equilibrium of the ecosystem will be totally different. It won't be as, as it is now. It will be impossible to live or at least in the way we are living, or at least to for the whole population, maybe some elite. But going to other issue, okay, because global warming, you know, okay, we are all speaking about global warming. You guess how my, uh, what is the number of premature death for air pollution per year in the world? This is the report from the international agency. Just now, guess, tell me a number. Prima to death for air pollution. Sorry? Two millions? Wow. You know what? Two millions is a lot. <laughs> You're crazy, but they are a bit more. Six millions. Yes, yes. No, I know that you are. I, it was kind of a joke to <laughs> provoke. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't <laughs> I respect you a lot. <laughs> six millions. This reminds you something. Six millions. 
it reminds me something. But these are number of a word word. Not to say an holocausto, because I could offend someone. And this is caused by the human kind. Full stop. This is what we are doing now. And as Gita said, we cannot go on. We have to do something right now and immediately. We have to stop killing people. And this is our system of production and consumption. Sorry, I get a bit excited when I speak about it. And then, okay, this is the environmental dimension. I can report other data, but the speech is shorter. If we go to the socio-ethical dimension, you know the Millennium Development Goal, they have a target of eradicating poverty in 2015. So see, this is the report of 2015. And uh, from uh, 1990 to 2015, we, ca we can actually report a decrease uh, of hunger in the world. So now, great, we are only, 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 only 795 million people undernourished, so suffering hunger. This is more than all European inhabitants. Maybe here you are more, but <laughs> anyhow, it's a big number. Like all the European, if that would be concentrated there, from uh, you know the, the newborn, from the elderly, they are all suffering hunger. This is not acceptable. So when speaking about sustainable development, uh, this is understood nowadays. And now when I'm speaking with my student or the conference, I really ch change the tone of my voice as I'm saying. We cannot say we have to do something. It's a matter of... Uh, now we are close to the collapse of the system and the collapse of the system and it's not just me, I'm not a scientist you know, taking out those numbers, I'm reading those numbers. Collapse of the system, it means that the energy that we have to use to clean up the, wor uh, the, the, the world and to give resources to uh, low-income people and so on, they are not enough they will create more pollution than the pollution that we take away. And that means something else, that we need a radical change. And when we speak, uh, I go a bit closer to the designer, because we are innovators, we are part, we are not the only one that innovate, okay? We are a bit egocentric, we think we can do everything. We have to deal even with other professionals. We have to think even in terms of uh, what is usually referred as system innovation, okay? Or even system innovation. Something broader than simply product or process innovation. Uh, this doesn't mean on the other side that we don't have to think about product. This is another mistake that sometimes happens. We think only about social innovation, system innovation, and then you forget that there is a material side <laughs> of it. And we don't teach our student to design product with a low environmental impact. And then we fail again. So going back to uh, design for sustainability, we have to think about uh, uh, design for sustainability, but even on a system level, system design for sustainability for all, meaning even for low and middle income contexts and for other. And when I'm speaking about context, uh, uh, I'm not speaking about countries. Context is a context. In Italy, we have context, low and middle income context. In the US, they have this. So I don't like to use many, of course, in some countries, the, 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 the low income problem is, is, is bigger. I'm, I'm not saying this, but I, will, I would like to, to have this clear. And to do it, as Gita said, now and everywhere. And the design community has a big role to play and it has to uh, be there in the design uh, community. So, said this as a premises, I want to say something, but again, 
you all know what is SPSS design for sustainability or there is someone that uh, would like to know something? Raise the hand. You all know? Who knows? Raise the hand. Yes, someone knows. You, you don't have to be shy. Yep. Okay, so I'm, I, I'm going to be short anyhow. <laughs> uh, well, uh, some researchers start to study product service system design, uh, sustainable product service system design at the end of the 90s because they discovered that uh, some uh, business model, existing business model or offer, they were interesting because they were coupling economical and environmental uh, benefits. So uh, business cases in which it was in the economic interest of the entrepreneur to say to the designer, you have to design a product with a low environmental impact, which is not all the time uh, uh, happening or not in a traditional sale product mark. So I make you an example to be clear. Uh, this is one of many. Uh, Rico, is they, they are selling photocopier, but they are selling even a different type of offer. Uh, for example, they may be coming here to the uh, Schriste School of Design and they say, we are not selling photocopier. What I'm selling to you is uh, uh, printed pages. You pay me for printed pages, okay? You, you don't buy the co photocopier. The photocopier remains in the ownership of uh, uh, the uh, producer, of Rico. And within that, they take care, the producer, of the maintenance, of the installation, of the repairing, of the collection at the end of, uh, of the life, all right? But what happens if uh, and they are doing this? This is a business, okay? In a very saturated market, they are doing even good business with this. But what happened? Can you guess? Can someone guess? Are they interested in selling uh, a product with a short lifespan because they can sell another one? You think so? No, and why? They have to pay the money for the product because they get the money from the printed pages. And so it's a cost for them. They are interested in designing long-lasting product. And if they get it back, they want to design for recycling. If not, they have to pay the cost for landfill, they have to buy new materials, and so on. I it can go on. But the point is that uh, when you change uh, the uh, business model into sustainable product service system, here I cannot really make uh, uh, the story long, um, and you may produce this parity shift, uh, it is in the economic, and uh, this is the really important thing, it is in the economic interest of the provider to uh, design product with a low environmental impact. It's like the provider, the producer is saying to the designer, if you don't design a product with a low environmental impact, I will fire you out because you make me lose money. No? which could be the opposite in a traditional, say, market. And what changed, actually, is that you are not selling product, you are selling what we call unit of satisfaction. All right? I'm not selling photocopier, I'm selling printed pages. <coughs> 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 Sorry. <coughs> <coughs> the customer value goes from uh, um, uh, individual ownership, I don't want to have my own uh, photocopier or car or something, but I want to have the assess. The quality is there, so the ownership remain by. And another thing is that the uh, innovation is not just that, or at the beginning in terms of technological innovation, is more in terms of stakeholder uh, innovation. It means new type of interaction among stakeholder. When it's with a user, a customer is a, it's called service, but it could be even between other stakeholder of uh, the old system. So uh, just, just, yes, please. Oh, because anyhow they are printing per page. Okay. No, uh, actually, the the 
then, then it's another issue. But the point is that you have a need, you have to communicate something to someone. So if this is communicated with low, uh, less resources, this is going better. If the system, for other reason, is going towards the fact that uh, I want to uh, spread out document without sense, but this is another issue. Okay, so I'm speaking about the business model. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm of course, the the issue is is complex, and you and we as designer, but here the discussion would be very long. We have to design such a product service system that they are really sustainable. Uh, but since the uh, 2005, let's say, around, the uh, design researcher start to define a new role for the designer. So if this business model were interesting, and uh, uh, here I will really make it very short, but basically uh, we move from, an, uh, from a traditional product you know, design to designing with a system approach in which we design the unit of, first of all we think about the unit of satisfaction, printed pages, and then we understood which is the best mix of product and service that can fulfill this. And that means that we have to be able to design product and service uh, together but this with this approach. A second thing which is different is what we call a stakeholder configuration approach. So the designer has to be able to design the configuration of stakeholder. Use the design skill, the creativity to do what? To design a nice product? No. Or the co or how the different company products stay together? No. Uh, to design how the different actors with their competencies or new competencies could be uh, together to offer uh, a new product service system. There beside I put uh, a, usual, a, a tool that is uh, often used which is called stakeholder system map for doing that. I cannot go in deep in that. So it's just you know, just an introduction. And of course, a system sustainability approach. You have to design such a system that is sustainable. Not all PSS, not all product service systems are sustainable. For your knowledge, uh, different methods and tools since those years, thanks to some EU-funded and Europe, uh, United Nations environmental program uh, research were uh, actually uh, developed. So designer has a tool to do that and with uh, some of those we were working with uh, Deep Tamari and uh, with the IIT, Guwahati, uh, uh, but even the, they are in, in New Delhi. And if you are interested, there is uh, a book of 2004 that uh, report uh, the knowledge base and the know-how uh, about this topic up to that uh, period. And that is for free. About distributed economies, uh, so I'm going to the second promising business model, even though it has been uh, studied since, uh, let's say, 2005, not that much as product service system, uh, so you don't find so many papers. Johansson was uh, one of the first uh, writing about uh, this. Uh, nevertheless, uh, what they are proposing, uh, again, a paradigm shift from centralized big scale production uh, system to small scale uh, uh, and distributed uh, production uh, system. Uh, within LENS we call it small scale production unit at or near the point of use where the user are the producer, whether individual, small business and or local community. And they could be connected with each other uh, and in this case they can be sharing resources, for example, sharing the surplus of energy if these are energies and so on. But to be more clear, what are these dis distributed economy? I make some example, but these are the typology that we are working on within, uh, this is the classification we made within, uh, so far within the land scene project. We speak about distributed renewable energy, so it could be home-based solar system, uh, where uh, the producer is the user and they could be connected to share the energy surplus. Distributed production of product, it is uh, an issue that we'll be working here the, mm, in, the, in uh, Lens, India. <laughs> <coughs> and that could be 3D printing, but could be even something different, like urban gardening, because you could be producing other things, not just you know 3D printing now is very uh, fashion, and it's, uh, but, but there are other things. 
uh, but it's even distributed production of software. Think about uh, Linux, so I report some easy example that you have in mind. Distributed production of information and knowledge, think about uh, Wikipedia, but even Lens. Lens is producing in a distributed way, as I was telling to you, uh, new knowledges. And even distributed design. Okay, now we're, uh, you have been, sh for sure you know, uh, terminology like open innovation or crowd design and, and something like this. And there are different examples in which uh, a community of designers are designing uh, in a distributed structure. Uh, there are some uh, uh, potential while they're sustainable, but I would like to go a bit faster on this because I think that the time is running. And I go to the research hypothesis of uh, uh, the Lensing project. So sustainable product service system applied to distributed economy, why they are interesting in our perception why they are win-win for sustainability for all. So the point is actually, if this is the paradigm shift from <coughs> centralized <coughs> uh, system to distributed system, what about if we apply the, uh, to this a sustainable product service system business model? We say that this may lead to sustainable opportunity for all, so even for low and middle income context. And I gave you here one example. Uh, here we are in uh, Tanzania. This is off-grid elec uh, electric. It's an example of SPSS applied to DA. These are the acronym. I hope that now you follow me. SPSS is Sustainable Product Service System and Distributed Economy. It's one type of distributed economy. In, in this case, it's distributed renewable energy. So what, uh, what they are offering, what Empower, the company, offer to Tanzanian rural people, they offer a solar home uh, kit, <coughs> which is made of uh, a solar panel, a, solar, uh, a storage, and the wiring. But they are offering even uh, the energy using product, some energy using product. They are uh, a lightning system and the phone charger and a few other things. But how they are offering those? As an SPSS. They are not selling those, so they retain the ownership. They are offering this, and in, in, in doing this, they are pay per time. And, uh, but what makes this? Make this affordable for low-income people? Because they don't have to pay the initial investment cost. They would not have the money to buy a solar panel, all right? Never. But in this case, yes, they can afford. They pay per time, okay? And the other thing is that many times, uh, a solar panel or other system, uh, you know, maybe someone has get uh, uh, some money to finance and to give, uh, uh, to voluntarily give a solar panel to some community, then the solar panel break, and what happened? They don't have the money to repair it. And then it doesn't work anymore. In a, an SPSS business model, what happened is that the producer offering this is paying for the maintenance repair. <coughs> so <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. For the <coughs> for, uh, <coughs> for the repairing of uh, ah. I have to take break. For the repairing of the um, <coughs> uh, of this. So it's not on the shoulder of the uh, low income people. So these people can go on uh, in buying, but in using. And whether it's uh, you know, a, a family or an entrepreneur. And this help, you know, to improve step by step the quality of life and to start up a business and so on. So basically we say that uh, applying a sustainable product service system model to a distributed economy, and we saw one type, uh, is a sustainable opportunity for all. Why? Because it cut, uh, repeating, it cut initial investment cost. I don't have to buy this, that I don't have the money. Uh, <coughs> um, and it cuts the life uh, cycle, uh, cycle cost. I don't, have, I, don't, I don't have the risk uh, to interrupt the use of my solar panel or gasifier or whatever it is because I don't have the money to repair it. And on the other side, remember, is an SPSS. The entrepreneur 
is interested in designing this to be long lasting, to be easy to be maintained, to be easy to be recycled and so on. So even the environmental dimension is into that. Okay, so uh, said this, and uh, even here we could say something more, but I go to the second research hypothesis, which is about design. We are designers, so if this is true, what we as designers can do? <coughs> and this is what <coughs> something that we are going to work it out. We, we don't have yet uh, the answer. This is our research. Um, but within the Lenses project, basically, we will take uh, the knowledge base and the know-how that we have already developed uh, to design sustainable product service system. We couple this with the knowledge that we are working and researching now on, on designing and developing distributed economy, whether they are distributed production or distributed design or distributed renewable energy and so on. <coughs> and then to try to come up, not to try, we will come up with a new knowledge base and know-how, so even method and tools for uh, designer to designing uh, system design for sustainable energy for all, which is a bit more sure than uh, designing sustainable product service system applied to distributed economies and so on, okay? But the key point is, uh, uh, is that one. So this is what we, are, we will be working on. And in the different you know, region here, you will be working on two type of distributed economies. In other parts, uh, they will be working on others and so on. <coughs> and finally, what I want to say is that, in fact, into the Lenses project, uh, the former one, the one that we actually uh, ended uh, uh, one month ago, we have been working on uh, sustainable product service system applied to distributed renewable energy. So to this uh, specific <coughs> <coughs> topic, <coughs> <coughs> type of uh, distributed economy. <coughs> so basically, up to this, we have already a knowledge base not only we have developed even uh, adapting an existing uh, uh, method and tools, we have developed uh, new tools for uh, designer for designing sustainable product service system applied to the array. <coughs> so this is already existing there, could be inspiring even to uh, uh, work it out for uh, the other issue. And these are all available uh <coughs> for free, of course, and in copy left at the Lenses web, uh, web platform. <coughs> we started even to develop some uh, uh, scenario, but this is going to be uh, just for your information. There is an internal paper that uh, we will uh, uh, circulate in a while. Um, a scenario, it means that we, were, we start to look uh, at different possible uh, whether they are business to consumer or business to business, whether they are just distributed or uh, um, decentralized structure, we are starting to figure out uh, different type of vision for company or community to uh, develop those. <coughs> we have been even collecting several case study. If you are interested, there is an internal paper uh, that we will uh, circulate about this. It's a paper, it's a working paper, so it's uh, into the lens, uh, Lensing uh, partnership we are discussing about that, but it could be open even to others if they are interested. Uh, but I'm not going to speak about this, I just want to say thank you for the attention and sorry for my <laughs> coughing. <laughs> If you have any question, I'm here for you. <coughs> Carlo, uh, so my question is, in these cases, who is designer? In all these things you're talking about, yes. who is, whom do you call a designer? 
who is the designer whom do you call a designer like who is talking about the business plans the way uh, distributed uh, systems are put in place so we are talking about a business plan uh, then we are talking about service we are talking about designing of the product itself so the person who designs the product alone is a designer or who is thinking about the whole thing is designer no 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 the key the key point i, I would like to go back to thank you for the question but uh, for the people that have been working on product service system design this is more clear i go to this slide that maybe tell you something <coughs> this is a design tool is is called a uh, stakeholder system map <coughs> so we actually uh, are working on designing even the stakeholder the stakeholder configuration so we are up to that uh, level not to say to the uh, you know businessman uh, uh, we do your business they know better business that than what we are doing but we have we need to have some kind of interaction and we have to use our creativity visual tools and other things uh, even to work on a system level you know when you design a product uh, it's like uh, you have to understand uh, uh, there is a product with the different components uh, so you have to understand uh, the uh, this is made of uh, for that but particular part that need this plus this poly polymers because it has this propriety then I need to make this joining elements with the other because I need to have it very well fixed so in, uh, or I need to disassemble and so on on a system level the components are the stakeholder the actors but the actor has their own uh, you know uh, competences existing or potential and the interaction what are are the interaction the, the, the joining elements so if I made a parallel are the interaction among the stakeholder it can be information flow uh, material flow or labor flow or so on so what we are saying is that we don't want to take away the job from the businessman but we can use uh, in collaboration with them our creativity to design to think and to design up to this level so I'm saying to design how can you be creative and try to be creative in designing a new configuration of actors all right and then I say but you have to make it sustainable because it's not said that PSS and all the configuration are sustained so working on a system level using uh, the uh, you know what is uh, you know into the capability of the designer but to a different level not to a product level to a system level when we are speaking about stakeholder that's why I said we have to move to a stakeholder configuration approach okay is that answering your question thank you other question hi thanks for the talk and thanks, Geeta, also for the great backdrop to this whole conference. No, my question, hello, can you hear me? No, yeah, yeah. no, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my question is, you know, So you say thanks? Yeah, I said thanks. No, <laughs> thanks, I want thanks to listen again because the, I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, joking. <laughs> uh, no, it's more about, uh, you know, this whole thing of sustainability. It's, we've, we've been hearing it for many, many years. Uh, and when I was in school back in the 80s, we used to call it appropriate technology also, you know, and it's, it's something that, but why is it that we always look at sustainability in retrospect, you know, we're always talking about it, about how things went wrong, and then trying to uh, improve things. Is there a way of foolproofing sustainability, you know, or SPSS, you know, so that, uh, <coughs> things work and don't go wrong how, how, how much is that possible you know no, uh, if I well understood now what I'm saying is that uh, we have to think about radical changes we have to think about units of satisfaction so saying to this units of satisfaction it means uh, I want to have clean clothes or uh, I want to I have copied pages or I want some information to be delivered or something like this said this uh, uh, everything I mean uh, for the designer 
it's really open the way in which maybe car disappear if it's about mobility because I don't need so uh, I'm, I'm not saying that speaking about SPSS we have to think about uh, well we have to understand which are the problem the existing problem but then we have to think really in a more radical way and and when speaking about SPSS this is really uh, really there and if you think that we have to design for the unit of satisfaction, I, in my perception, this is going add to the deep of what is designing. So we don't have to design a nice car for a person, or we have to design, uh, you know, <laughs> new satisfaction. And when I say about satisfaction, it's need and wants and, and something like this. And so I even ethically speaking, not really uh, only related to sustainability, this is something that uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, it is important, um, but maybe I'm not. I'm not sure. I really answered. Yeah, I was just gone. thinking more. I'm just thinking more on a much larger scale when we are talking about ecological problems. Right at one level, we are talking about sustainability yeah. from that point of view, where uh, we have <laughs> the kind of pollution we have in Delhi or yes. in our cities, right? And it's all because of accumulation of practices of a certain yeah. kind. Yeah, right? but, but, okay, we, we, we are designer, I have to stop? Yeah. Okay. No, we, we, are, we are designer and we have to understand uh, to which level we can, uh, as a citizen, we can do the best, we can go to protest in the street and, uh, okay, but then as designer, and I'm speaking here, uh, what the designer, in my perception, can do and to work up to the system level is already more than just working, you know, on... Uh, but we are not changing the political issue. What we can do actually is to design product or product service system that are perceived. We are not neither, you know, as perceived as a better solution, uh, more appealing, more aesthetically interesting than others, and they are even technically more sustainable. And then in this way, induce uh, a, a different consumption uh, pattern of, of consumption into the into the into the people you know sometime some product and so some services are coming out and things change uh, very rapidly so if we know which are the value of sustainability if we are great designer and even good not only in a tec in the technical terms to know what is very sustainable but even good in uh, for a good aesthetic, the aesthetic of sustainability for me is a very, very important issue that we can make a conference another day about it. But it's really key important, you know, to uh, make so that the new sustainable product service system or, or whatever they are, they will substitute, substitute the unsustainable and, and existing one. If we do something that is very sustainable but is ugly or too costly, it won't be there, you know. We have to make radical changes but they need to be diffused. There is another question, but uh, please tell me if I have to stop. Uh, taking his point further, uh, we are talking of sustainability as something that is the other. I, if, I, if I were to look at sustainability as, say, a language like English or whatever it is, Hindi, Malayalam, and I learn it and I inter internalize it, and I understand the grammar, the syntax, everything that goes into the language of sustainability, then I will not make grammatical mistakes in my life. You know? And taking Gita's <coughs> point further to just provoke and to think new, for example, if I were to think of organizing a conference on sustainability, I would think about bislery bottles, I would think of printing on paper, these, I'm just questioning, can we internalize sustainability so that it becomes something that we just uh, live and use in our everyday life? This, I, no, of course, of course. We, we, <coughs> we, we have to do whatever we, we can. And sometime uh, in the existing world, there are some constraints. If I have to go to buy the food for my daughters, I try to buy organic food, 
I try to buy by local producer, but I cannot find everything. And I don't have the time uh, uh, to do everything. So sometimes I go to a uh, big mall to buy something, and which is... Uh, so uh, there are even some uh, limit in which we have to move. It's, it's, it's a system level, so... Uh, but I hope that... Uh, and, and what we can give is it's a contribution. We can do it, of course, in our uh, daily life. Uh, said this, I think that uh, uh, we have uh, even m a more, it's not that we don't have to be coherent, but we have to be aware that being, I don't know, maybe there are some students that in a while you will be designer of the future, but I'm speaking more to the uh, professor or researcher, we have a key role here to play. So there is something may happen immediately because I do something, but if we don't build a new generation of designer, nothing will change. So it's not just sometime, you know, uh, we, are, we are making something to, uh, like Sh Sharon Stone uh, collected lots of money to build up the nets uh, against the mosquitoes for malaria in Africa. Okay, great, she did it. Vangari Matai, a Nobel Prize from Africa, from uh, uh, Uganda, said it's good, but then they break and the situation is there the same. So we have to think even in changing, uh, 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 you know, the professional skills, the cultural skills, and something like this. And we, within the university, we have to understand the new knowledges, we have to transmit the new knowledges, and so on. And so I think that... Uh, we have to be coherent, but it's really, really very important that we take very strong and close to our heart uh, the role that and the responsibility that we have into this. Uh, understanding the new knowledge and disseminating as much as possible and as fast as possible those new knowledges for a new generation of professional. So this doesn't mean that we don't have to make the most sustainable uh, seminar or conference or when we go home uh, we have to walk uh, instead of taking a cab or whatever and, and okay